Hi everyone, I'm Shane Stevenson, Director of Museum Collections and Curator here at the Buffalo Naval Park. And for today, I'm kind of hanging out with the birds. They've had free reign of the 04 and 05 decks, uh, or levels here on USS Little Rock, but today I'm up here. And we are going to be talking about these gun directors that you see behind me. So, <laughs> gun directors, I covered those on the USS The Sullivans. If you've watched that video, thanks for your support. Uh, that was also from afar. Uh, I'd like to get to the 05 level, to, uh, and I will. Uh, just again, with safety, the camera, and with it just being me today, uh, you know, if I climb up there, how's the camera gonna get up there, I guess? You know, I don't have a knapsack or anything with it. So, we are looking at the two gun directors that would have controlled the five inch 38 mount and the six inch 47 turret. Now, in the USS Little Rock's original configuration, she would have had the set here, as you see, and also a set in the aft superstructure. We have, for the 6 inch 47 turret, here is the Mark 34, all right, with the antenna on top, and just aft, we have that again Mark 37, like we see on USS the Sullivans, controlling those uh, 5 inch mounts. All right, so I'm going to get behind the camera and zoom in a little bit. Okay, if we want to focus on that Mark 34, she sat atop an armored barbette, as you see here, leading right through the 04 level and down through the ship. Now the antenna on top would be the Mark 13 antenna, and you can see behind the shield a little bit. There was also a Mark 8, all right, that had the array that looked like a bunch of uh, like rebar, steel rebar. Obviously it wasn't, but it looked like this, but this was the Mark 13. All right, and at general quarters for the Mark 34, you would have had six total in this space. You would have had the gun director, the range finder, the range, the radar range operator, uh, the pointer, the cross leveler, and the trainer. So as I was mentioning with the Sullivans, they would have had four guys in their uh, 30, Mark 37 gun director here for the Mark 34 controlling the 6 inch 47, you would have had six. At lower conditions, condition two, condition three, you could have had three or four man manning here, but at general quarters, you would have had six guys in total. All right, let's take a walk a little bit, and here we go at the five inch 38. Mark 37, again sitting atop a barbette, a armored barbette. And like we saw on the Sullivans, she has the SPG 25 radar. That's the dish. Now this was a twin barreled five inch 38. Unlike the single barreled, they're both dual purpose. So that's air and surface. But at the, but on the Sullivans, again, there'd be four, but because this was a twin barreled, you would have had six crew, just like the Mark 34 here. So in here, you would have had, again, the gun officer, the pointer, trainer, assistant control officer, radar operator, and range finder. And also very easy to see right here. And there you would have been able to 
begin your range and elevation and bearing and training. So that's on the inside, but where do these gun directors lead? All right, so we're gonna actually head down to the gun plot and I'm gonna show you and talk a little bit about uh, what we do have in the gun plot compartment. Now, if you've watched our video on uh, our missing gun control computers uh, with Brian Robluski uh, that we did right before Christmas time, I think it was, you will see that, or you will learn that some of our computers uh, certainly the stable elements and the vertical stabilizers were removed to be added to those Iowa class battleships when they came back in the 80s. And we've never gotten them back. So we're going to take a look at what we do have and talk a little bit more about the fire control systems. Uh, so follow me. Hi everyone, so now I'm on the second platform and again, I can't thank Brian, John, and Carl enough. Uh, they came to this area on the curator tour. Uh, it was dark, it was dirty, it was dusty. And if you've watched our Step Forwards video on YouTube, uh, you'll see I interviewed them for a few minutes about their passion and look at the space now. It's absolutely stunning the difference and even in the deck they were able to get some donated uh, sh uh, steel plating and so now we don't even have any holes in the deck. All right, but behind me we are in the port side gun plot. There's also a starboard side through a watertight door uh, but this controlled the 5 inch 38. This is the Mark 1 I, Mark 1A I computer with a star shell, uh, star shell computer as well. Again, this used to be all dungy and dirty, all right, but now with Brian, Carl, and John, they've cleaned it up, they've gotten the lights on. It's a fabulous look, and it's a fabulous passion that they shared with the Naval Park. Uh, it's benefiting them because they're getting a lot out of it, and of course, it's benefiting us as well. So if we take a look at the good work that they've done, this was, so the Mark 37 for the five inch th uh, 38 sent the data to this computer and this computer then put in the range bearing elevation relative position to uh, the ship itself. And this then controlled the five inch 38 that we see forward on the forecastle. Look at how nice, so they cleaned all of those window slots as best as they could. Unfortunately, the hand cranks do not work. All right, so it'd be nice to get one of them. Oh, oh, there we go, okay. But of course, this hole in the deck right here, as I mentioned, they got sheeting for us. All right, this would have been, of course, with a Mark VI stable element, and that was probably removed with those Iowa-class battleships. All right, now we're heading starboard. Going into the six inch 47 gun plot. You can see that big hole there. That would have been for the Mark 48 gun control computer. And also another hole in the deck right here, which would have been for the Mark 41 stable vertical or the stable element. All right, what we do have is the Mark 8 Range Keeper. Again, they clean the, oh, I mean, my gosh, it's practically brand new compared to what it was. Now, they could not get in here and get out this patina crud, all right, but they were able to clean the glass. And so, again, you can see all of that data much more clearly now. 
All right, so it's the, with the six inch 47s, you actually had the ability for indirect fire or direct fire. All right, for indirect fire, that is where the target cannot actually be visually seen. All right, and you're using dead reckoning data. You know, you're plotting a course of where they were, and that will lead you to where they might be. All right, so the Mark 8 range keeper for indirect fire received its information directly from the Mark 48 computer right here. All right, so from, from the gun director, the Mark 34 on the 05 level, that sent it down to the computer right here. And for indirect fire, it went from the computer to the range keeper, and then this controlled the turret itself. For direct fire, meaning that a target was in visual range, this received all of that telemetry right from the gun director, the Mark 34 gun director, directly. So it bypassed the computer here for direct fire, and went right to the computer, the range keeper, which then was able to again tell the six inch 47s uh, where to train, elevate. So it's very, the gunfire uh, control systems on board were very intricate, but again, we had the two directors, the 37 and 34, that sent the information down here to these computers, and that Mark 1, I, Mark 1A I is exactly like we'd find on the Sullivans. All right, but at least with the Sullivans, we still have the vertical stable element. Uh, so this is on the Curator Tour. If you'd like to come visit this space, you know, for our upcoming season, uh, when we open, you can go to our website, see the Curator Tours, uh, the dates and the times, and you yourself can come down to visit the gun plot. You'll go up once to the first platform to see the uh, CIC, which they also uh, cleaned up. Fabulous work, fabulous passion, and we're so glad we're able to engage the public uh, in ways that we haven't been able to do before. So if you like this video, please subscribe, ring the bell, you know, all that jazz, look down below, suggested videos, uh, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much.